in a scatter graph, each piece of data, each piece of information is marked with a cross. Here we've got a scatter graph that has biology scores and physics scores. So each cross on this scatter graph will be one student. So if a student scored 40 in biology and 60 in physics, a cross would go at 40, 60 to represent that student. If another student scored 60 in biology and 50 in physics, a cross would go at 60, 50 to represent that student. We use scatter graphs to look at the correlation between two things. So the relationship in this case between biology scores and physics scores. When we talk about correlation, we can say we've got a positive correlation if as one goes up, the other one goes up as well. So if as the biology scores go up, the physics scores go up as well, we'll say it's a positive correlation. If as one of our things goes up, the other one goes down, we'll get a shape like this, and we'll call that a negative correlation. Or we could have no correlation at all. So there could be no relationship between the two variables, between the two things we're measuring. So we could have no correlation. It's important to know that just because two things are correlated, say there was a positive correlation between the biology scores and the physics scores, that doesn't mean there's a causation. So it doesn't mean that one of them is causing the other one. Doing extra work in biology isn't going to cause your physics score to go up. So just because there's a correlation, it doesn't mean that one is the cause of the other. Here's an example. Here's a scatter graph. And the scatter graph shows 12 students, the scores of 12 students, in their biology and physics tests. What type of correlation does the graph show? So we can see it's heading up as the biology scores go up, the physics scores go up as well. So that is a positive correlation. And part B says another student scored 40 on their biology test. Estimate the physics score for this student. So we can draw a line of best fit on a scatter graph. So here we've got 12 students, 12 bits of data. We want a line that fits this correlation as best as possible. So we're going to want roughly the same number of points on both sides. And we're trying to minimize the distances from the points to the line. So it's going to look something like that. And we are told that one student scored 40 in biology. So if they scored 40 in biology, we can use our line of best fit to estimate their physics score. So if we go from 40 in biology up to the line, and then across, and we can read off their physics score or our estimate for their physics score, which looks to be around 49. And for these, there'd be a range of acceptable answers. So something in this region would be acceptable. So it depends on your line of best fit. And as long as you've drawn a reasonable line of best fit and read off it, you will be OK. Here's another example. This time we've got the temperature and ice cream cells. So each of the crosses this time represents a different day. And there are 10 days shown in the diagram. It says one point is an outlier right down the coordinates of this point. So which point does not fit the correlation? 
which point looks out of place. So you can see we've got a correlation, a positive correlation, and you could draw a line of best fit for these nine points. And one point doesn't fit with the correlation. It's a long way away from the line of best fit. So it is an outlier and it's coordinates R. So that's 22 and 70, 22, 70. The shop manager wants to use the graph to predict ice cream sales on a day when the temperature is five degrees. Comment on the reliability of this prediction. So if you predict outside of the range of values you've got, so we only have information on between 13 and 20 two and a half degrees. We've only got information on that range of days. We have no information about five degrees. So it wouldn't be a reliable prediction. And well, it may even be negative if you followed the same relationship. So it's not reliable because it's out of the range of data we've got. That's called extrapolation. And we say it's unreliable. So it will be unreliable because five degrees is outside of the range of data, outside of our range of data. So a question for you to try. So give this one a go. A scatter graph shows the maths test scores and English test scores for some students. What type of correlation have we got? So we can see we've got a positive correlation. As one goes up, the other one goes up. So we would be able to draw a line of best fit. And when we draw a line of best fit, we try to get roughly the same number of points on both sides, and we're minimizing the distances from the points to the line. So that's a positive correlation. As one goes up, the other one goes up. It's a positive correlation. It says one of the points is an outlier, write down the coordinates of the point. So we can see again, there's one point that doesn't fit with our correlation. It's not close to the line of best fit. So this point and its coordinates are 80 and 42 or 43. So I've got 80, 40, I'll call that 42. Another question for you to try. So give this one a go. The scatter graph shows the goals scored and goals conceded by 12 football teams. What type of correlation do we have this time? So we have a negative correlation this time. So as one goes up, the other one goes down. So it's a negative correlation. And we're told another team scored 55 goals. Estimate the number of goals they conceded. So we need to draw a line of best fit. So it's going to go through the points. The same number of points on both sides, roughly, and try and minimize the distances to the line. So we can use a line of best fit to estimate. So another team scored 55 goals. So goal scored 55. So go along to the line and then down. So it looks like we have 41. Again, there's going to be a range of values that would be acceptable. But as long as you've got a reasonable line of best fit and you use it, 
you should be okay.